I'm going to give you a very brief history of how I got involved. I built the green building in Temple Bar over 15 years ago. We put wind turbines, the yellow devices, solar PV, the dark blue things, and solar thermal devices on them, and a whole lot of other things. Um, and that was built, as I say, 15 years ago, and we've monitored them ever since. And we know um, exactly how they have all performed. Initially, the PV systems had to be off-grid. We charged batteries, and we had a separate circuit. And in 2005, we were allowed to use a thing on the right, which is called a grid-connected inverter, which enabled us to connect the electricity directly to the grid. And that's a picture of what happened when we switched them on. And you see the meter there is reading 1,711, or 1,711. That was the output of those PV arrays in August 2006, which was six years after they'd been installed. And the, out the theoretical output was 1,710. So they were doing exactly what it said on the tin. They required no maintenance during their lifetime. They'd been completely ignored deliberately. So that was, to me, very convincing evidence of the fact that these things did what they said. The bottom picture there is the r data that I've been recording ever since they were grid-connected. So, and, and that's every month, how many kilowatt hours they generated per month for, ne for three and a half years now. So I now know with great deal of certainty what these things do. That's the four years sort of... Or, amalgamated news and that's January to December you can see we had that incredible year in 2007 April 2007 I don't know if many of you remember but it was phenomenally sunny but otherwise there's a fairly consistent pattern there what is interesting to me is that the weather in Ireland doesn't correspond with what the geography books you can see that there's a very distinctive sort of early summer that we've get we're getting and if you look again a bit more closely that graph there on the left is the number of kilowatt hours per month divided by the hours of daylight. So it gives an indication of how intense the sunlight is during daylight. And you can see for the last three years, one, three, four, and five, which is March, April, May, consistently higher than the rest of the year. So that's the time to take your holidays, in my view. So having got that data and having shown that the technology worked, uh, we went and I thought this is a product that I'd be happy to endorse and happy to try and introduce to Ireland because I know it reduces carbon emissions, I know it's maintenance for free V, I know it's not cheap and I had to try and just demonstrate to people who were interested uh, what it would do. These are some of the first installations. Uh, the one on the top left is one of the first domestic installations, that's a passive house in Kildare. That's what's called an in-roof system. So those panels are taking the place of the slates, actually built into the roof. The one below is an on-roof system where they're above the slates, and the other one is, where is a slate system where they're actually taking the place of the slates. We also put them on the ground. Where there is a ground, the essential requirement is south-facing, southeast to southwest will do, but anywhere in that area, unshaded. And obviously a roof is the first space, but if you have space in the ground, uh, they work just as well on the ground and they're less expensive to put there and they're easier to get at. That top one was the first ground mounted system, uh, 2.5 kilowatt in Wicklow. The bottom left hand one is a tracking system. Those actually follow the sun and we get 50% more out of them. And we have a number of commercial arrays. The uh, Newbridge Cutlery, which is the, those two that were the first ones we put in. And what's sort of interesting there is the top photograph is they're facing south at 40 degrees, which is theoretically the ideal orientation. The bottom one, they're facing southeast and a slope at 20 degrees, which isn't ideal. And in fact, the southeastern ones are generating more power than the southerly facing arrays. My belief is, is that it's because of the Irish weather, where we tend to get cloud buildup during the day, you get more cloud midday and therefore you get more sunshine in the morning and the evening. So the arrays pointing slightly more towards the east get more direct sunlight than the ones facing south. So I put together an, a case study for Energy Quarter because my aim in life is to try and inform people as accurately and reliably as I can about what's happening here. I'm passionately concerned about climate change and what we're doing to the planet and I really do want to try and help reduce carbon dioxide emissions because that's one of the main acts of vandalism that's going on at the moment. So I did a study and I took a 140 square meter house, sort of 1,500 square feet, uh, not a large, not a small house. 
And from the data I've collected, if it's energy efficient and the occupants are living in an energy efficient manner, I'd expect that to consume 2,000 kilowatt hours of electricity for everything apart from hot water and heating. And 75% of that's consumed during the daytime, day tariff, and 25% at night. Most houses with boilers use electricity to hot, heat the hot water during the summer. And then typically the summer today is 30 weeks of the year. And uh, again, they use about 12 kilowatt hours per day for hot water, or 2,500. And 20 kilowatt hours um, per annum. And again, half of that's during the daytime tariff and half of it during, during the nighttime tariff. I'm splitting between the two tariffs because it's cheaper at night. And if you price that up, I did this a few months ago, it works out at about 900 euros per annum. So that's what, in an energy efficient house, you should be spending on electricity. And I've, that's the starting line because you can't save what you're not spending. Um, so if you were to have your electricity cost, you'd only save 450 euros, no matter what anybody says to you about all the technology mm -hmm. they're selling. In an inefficient household, and most households are inefficient, it'll be twice that. For a PV system, apart from needing um, an unshaded south-facing site, the other constraint is planning. And the planning exemption is 12 square meters, uh, which is roughly, it works out at about nine or 10 modules, which is about one, one, one to 1.5 kilowatts in output. And the cost of a system of that size, I say here, it costs yeah, about 11,500 plus VAT. That's the cost of a PV system of nine units. In other words, a planning exempt system. And the cost of installation on top of that is about 1,200 euros. What happens is the modules, the panels are fitted first. That usually takes a roofer who comes along and just fits the brackets and puts the modules on. And then he puts the cables through the roof. The next thing is to put in the inverter and connect it up to the grid. That usually takes an electrician less than a day. Um, the inverter itself has to be certified as being compliant with the Irish regulations before you connect it to the grid. A form has to be sent in to ESB notifying that you're going to do this before you can connect it. And it has to be certified as being compliant by a certified electrician. If you want to get paid for any surplus power, you have to um, apply to the ESB for an import-export meter. It costs about 200 euros, I think. Uh, and if you want, don't want to do that, you can wait until the smart meters come along because they are going to be import-export meters. Um, so the properly placed planning exempt PV array will generate in, in the region of 1,600 kilowatt hours per annum. And that will be uh, worth about 300 euros and it's about 33% of the typical electric, electricity bill. They are very long life. They're what I call fit and forget systems. There's no maintenance involved, but they're not cheap. Um, and the way I assess their values is, is looking, at the, looking, them at, looking at them as a long-term investment. Um, I believe they're a better investment for young people than, than not young people because they do have this long lifespan. And if you assume electricity is going to go up at 10 to 12% per annum, it gives you a return on investment of about 20% over the 25-year over the guaranteed period. So they give better initial return than most comparable investments, long-term investments. You won't find a long-term investment that will give you anything like 20% at the moment. Um, the return does increase in the line with increasing electricity costs. They do substantially imp improve the building energy rating of your house and its, and its value. And that's going to become relevant because as you, if you want to let your house, you have to have a BRSR. And if you want to sell it, likewise. And then personally, you'll have a slightly lightened conscience in my view because you're definitely reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Um, and if you're building a new house, uh, without a doubt, it's the most, and it's properly designed. I keep saying properly designed, energy efficient and all the rest. But if it is properly designed, it's the most efficient way to comply with the building regulation requirements for renewable um, electricity or renewable energy.